I wanted to segue quickly to just we can spend a few minutes on this topic. Um, the paper that Charles Hoskinson tweeted the other day, the parallel chains paper. And I wanted to highlight the importance of this in Cardano's scaling efforts, because with the first generation and second generation blockchains, well, everyone's trying to scale. I mean, Bitcoin's trying to do the Lightning Network, Bitcoin NG, Next Generation, the Hybrid Consensus, Thunderella. There are all these papers and protocols that are basically highlighting how to achieve this scalable fashion within the first generation of blockchains. And like basically using the black blockchain on the back end and using more of like a centralized server on the on the front end but that issue there's an issue because if that centralized server gets shut down then we have issues with the lightning network itself or whatever network that that protocol or that blockchain is employing and with cardano i think it's extremely important this idea of increasing our throughput with these parallel chains so running these chains parallel and running these blocks simultaneously so that increases the processing speed that that increases the processing output of cardano in general i think it's most analogous the way i understood it was comparing let's say another third generation blockchain or a first generation blockchain claims that their TPS is through the roof. They claim that they can do a million transactions per second. I compare them to the United States Postal Service. USPS, they have millions and millions of customers around the United States. Everyone can go right now and put a letter in their mailbox and put that flag up. So technically, USPS's transaction, their output, their throughput is like a million you know, parcels per, per second. But does it mean that they can pick up a million packages per second? The only way they could do that is if they had a USPS truck stationed right outside everyone's mailbox at the exact time that they put their mail inside the uh, inside the mailbox. And you know, you can. This is analogous to like the latency issue, the the latency issue within within blockchain. So what Cardano is looking to do is this idea of parallel chains, and I compare it to Amazon. I took a tour of the Amazon FBA warehouse, so fulfillment by Amazon in Tennessee, probably three or four years ago. And the idea is that multiple different computers are processing everyone's prime order simultaneously, and packages are being fed on multiple different lines, but they all converge into the main central Amazon computer. But Amazon is able to increase their throughput basically by running lines simultaneously. And I think this is exactly what Cardano is going to be doing with their parallel chains. And I just wanted to make a quick mention. I know I'm going to get heat in the comments, but one of our main competitors is EOS. And EOS at the beginning claimed a lot of transactions per second through their through their actual blockchain. But in recent in recent times, it's been exposed that they can't produce what they say on paper. And I think this is very important for Cardano. I actually have the quote right here. So as observed in the section on performance, this is for EOS. The transaction throughput in the system does not exceed 250 transactions per second, what they were claiming, even in optimal settings with zero milliseconds of latency and 0% packet loss. During tests with real-world conditions of 50 milliseconds of round-trip latency and 0.01% packet loss, performance dropped below 50 TPS, putting the system in close proximity to the performance that exists in Ethereum. So this idea of claiming your blockchain can do something, while theoretically it could, can, and actually being able to do it is a whole nother game. So I don't know if anyone wanted to put their two cents in or their two ADA in. Yeah, I mean, I can say that the goal or the pillar of scalability is, in a sense, closely related to the interoperability. And the, the, the reason I say this is because, I mean, Cardano has a research stream for these kinds of projects for connecting blockchains together, right? So there's the Nepopel paper, Non-Interactive Proofs of Proof of Works, that was supposed to figure out how do we connect proof of work blockchains. And there's also a, a proof of stake, uh, proof of proof of stake paper that's hopefully going to come out soon that talks about how to connect 
proof of stake blockchains, right? And then once we have this, and we have the Ouroboros BFT paper, which is all released, you can imagine that we scale our network up by having, you know, the main chain, right, which is using proof of stake. And then you could send your coins around to these Ouroboros BFT chains that run a specific smart contract, possibly run and validated by the same people as the main chain, possibly not. And you're kind of hopping around between different chains. Uh, and then eventually, whenever you need to settle, you use the main chain as a settlement layer, right? And so if you consider scalability, not from a, a single chain point of view, uh, but from an ecosystem point of view, then in a sense, they're, they're working towards the same goal, right? The fact that you can balance between multiple chains to get your transactions through uh, for different purposes allows the system to scale more. And if anything, you can see this uh, with the existing uh, blockchain ecosystem, right? So if you imagine we only had Bitcoin, right? Imagine Bitcoin is the only option. That means the entirety of the concept of blockchain will be limited to about 10 transactions per second, right? But the reason blockchains have grown to handle a, a large amount of money is because we've essentially increase the scalability of the ecosystem as a whole by allowing people to move to different chains, right? If, if you know, Bitcoin is too slow for me, I can trade my Bitcoin for another cryptocurrency and use that network, right? And then that's some scalability benefit for the ecosystem, not for an individual, individual chain. And Cardano is in a sense pursuing that uh, in the sense that we're trying to create a connected ecosystem. So you can more easily uh, get access to networks that have unused bandwidth in a trustless manner, right? Because right now the problem we have with the current ecosystem is say, okay, you're on Bitcoin and the Bitcoin network is congested, right? And you look at Cardano and you're like, oh, Cardano has some free bandwidth. I should uh, go on the Cardano chain, make some transactions there and possibly move back eventually. That's not possible right now without a trusted middleman, right? You'd have to, you know, put it on Binance or something, sell your coins to this trusted middleman and then transfer to Cardano, right? We would like to have uh, the ability to reuse this this unused bandwidth in a trustless fashion, right? And that's kind of the, the core of IOHK's uh, research for NEPA powers and this proof of proof of stake stuff.